Hello everyone, my name is Sick, and welcome back to another video for Arma 3. Today we will, we will be discussing the recently announced Jets DLC, because uh, a new trailer, which you just saw before I started talking, um, just revealed a new special feature that is coming along with this DLC, and it is quite exciting. You can actually see it on the background here as well, that's pretty damn cool. It's an aircraft carrier. And I don't know exactly how functional it is going to be in the game, but I'm definitely very intrigued. And the reason I say, um, I, yeah, the reason I say I don't know how functional it is going to be is that because in all previous Arma titles, uh, big ships like this were always static. So I kind of expect this one to be static as well, because I kind of imagine Arma with its physics engine having some trouble at least for. Um, vehicles taking off from other vehicles that is probably not going to go over too well so I imagine this is going to be a static um, a static object but it does have some maneuverable items on it as well but we, we will get to that a little bit later down the list so what is the Arma 3 Jets DLC going to be I've opened up the official website with the description so let's have a look we will fight in the sky of course we are <laughs> talking about jets so we can engage the enemy in air superiority jets. It is coming on May 16th, and it is going to be part of a second DLC bundle. The first DLC bundle, of course, was um, Marksman's, Marksman DLC, Carts DLC, though that kind of like started off as a fir yeah, first of April joke. Um, we had some other stuff as well. Lots of stuff. But um, in this one, we will have several new uh, enemy vehicles. Let's see, we will have uh, a jet for the US, we will have a jet for um, oh, CSAT, yeah, I was looking for the word. <laughs> CSAT will have their own vehicle, uh, the Greek faction will also have its own unique vehicle, and I imagine that at least for the US and, uh, and uh, CSAT vehicles, there will be reskins to be appropriate for Tanoa as well as um, Altis and Stratis, right? And along the way, we also get a Sentinel, which is an unmanned combat aerial vehicle. So it is basically like a big ass drone, an armed drone. So that could be pretty cool, pretty useful for long range uh, stuff like that. You know, like in co-op scenarios, I can definitely imagine this being very useful, having air support available to you without requiring a dedicated player as a pilot just hovering around the area so that could definitely have a lot of potential we will also get a new showcase for the fighter jets and the showcases if you haven't played armor before they are basically single player scenarios where you can try out a specific feature so these showcases are all about the that one exact thing so there is a showcase for underwater combat you know diving there is a showcase for combined arms assaults. There is now going to be a showcase that focuses entirely on the fighter jets. So here it says as well, take to the skies above Altis and engage in air-to-air -air and air-to-ground combat in a brand new showcase scenario. So I imagine, you know, there's going to be a big battle. You're called in for support. You have to fight the enemy uh, fighter jets, you know, gain air superiority. And once that is done, you will support the troops on the ground to take their objectives. Something like that probably. You can also see some nice screenshots of these jets in action. They look pretty damn cool. And I actually kind of especially like the CSAT one and this one as well. Not sure which this one is going to be. This looks to be uh, the, the independent faction, yeah. But I like the CSAT one a little bit better because this one is actually, um, you can't see it all that well here. But, you know, it has the camo from the top, so if you're above, above this plane, it should kind of, like, blend in with the environment below. That is kind of the idea there. But then the bottom of it should be white, I think. Oh, yeah, you can see it here. This is the same plane. I thought maybe it's a different plane, but it is. you can see it is the exact same plane. So the bottom of it is white. And that means that when you're on the ground and you're looking up at the sky, this one can kind of blend in with the clouds as well. That's pretty damn cool. But here's the best thing about Armor Free's DLC policy, because every time they've released a major bit of DLC, they also release a free platform update. 
So the Armor 3 Jets DLC is supported by a major Armor 3 platform update featuring new content and features. The platform update is free for all owners of Armor 3. So this means that even if you do not buy the Armor 3 Jets DLC, that only means that you will not have access to the showcase, you will not have access to these vehicles. But you can still play in co-op missions that employ these vehicles, you just cannot fly them personally. Other people will be able to fly these as long as they own the DLC. But at least the people who don't buy this are not excluded from participating. Right, so what are the new features that are coming along with the DLC? Well, we have a sensor overhaul, a new radar interface for targeting guiding weapons, or guided weapons, powered by advanced active radar and infrared sensor technology. Makes a variety of vehicles, including jets, helicopters and tanks, capable of combat beyond visual range. That is very cool, because this, the sensor overhaul, does not just affect airplanes. It affects everything that has this kind of technology on board. It is exactly what it says, you know, tanks, helicopters, and jets. So, even the tanks will benefit from this. And we also know that there is going to be a specific tanks DLC uh, coming out later. Probably 2018. That is the, the plan for now, I believe. Right. So, we also get extended hit points, and this means that, dam that airplanes can be damaged in various ways. So, you can have an engine failure, a, f a fuel leak, a malfunctioning HUD, or other types of damage, and this will make it much harder to fly the plane. That is really cool, because at the moment it's kind of like... Yeah, you know? It's pretty generic when it comes to the damage model. You, you're, you're either alive or you're dead, that is basically it. There are some things, you know, like for the deal for the helicopters, it is more noticeable that if you shoot out the rotor on the rear end, then the helicopter is going to spin. That was there, but not a whole lot of stuff like that was there for the jets. But that is going to be there now, and it's going to be free for everyone. Also, we are getting dynamic vehicle loadouts. That means you can now customize your vehicle's armaments. In the case of jets, this means you can choose what kind of ordnance each pylon carries. Dynamic vehicle loadouts is designed to be compatible with other vehicles, vehicle classes in Arma, which also means that content creators have the option to implement this new functionality in their assets. That is extremely damn cool. Really damn cool. And it also means, you know, because right now you place down uh, a jet in the, in the editor and it comes with a, a, a pre-made loadout. And I'm not entirely sure if you can actually affect the loadout or not. I have actually no idea, because I haven't actually made many missions with the jets, so I'm not entirely sure. But at least we now will have the option to fine-tune this stuff, and I guess this will be an option in co-op or multiplayer, probably single-player as well. Maybe even in the showcase DLC, I don't know, but that could be cool, like you could be on the, on the ground first, select what kind of loadout you want, and then the mission starts, and yeah, you'll just have to make whatever you brought along with you work. Also, we're getting some other improvements. Uh, the overall experience of flying a jet in jet aircraft in Armor 3 has been improved with the help of audio enhancements, tweaked controls, and several new scripted solutions, such as ejection seat emergency procedures. You can see on the screenshot, that looks extremely damn cool. This plane is all kinds of shut up, and this guy just has to bail out, and he does. Really, really nice. But along with this DLC and the new features that we get to play with, we also get free content we get the aircraft carrier USS Freedom, which is the one you saw in the trailer at the start of this video. So, the USS Freedom is the second ship of its class, carrying hull designation CVN-83. This nuclear-powered aircraft carrier serves as a main operating base for NATO. The USS Freedom can carry various aircraft and helicopters on board that can facilitate almost every support role. With a length of 337 meters and a width of 105 meters, this is the largest ship ever built. I can believe it. Jesus Christ. That is a big ass ship. The aircraft car, uh, here we go. Yeah, the aircraft carrier is a static in game object that can be positioned across the map via the 3D scenario editor but cannot be driven. The carrier supports catapult takeoffs and tail hook landings and features functional autonomous defensive weapon systems. So that is really damn cool. This is actually exactly what I expected because I. You know, along the years, I mean, I've been playing on this engine, because they've been iterating on the same engine. 
I've been playing this since the release of the original Operation Flashpoint. And along the way, you know, I've seen all the discussions of features that people want to have in Arma. And along the way, most of those features have arrived. And most of them actually arrived with Arma 3. Primarily through the DLC and uh, the free platform updates. For example, when they released the Marksman DLC, they released something for free to the entire community that everybody wanted, which was uh, deployable bipods and weapon resting on the environment. And they added it for free to everyone. This meant that with the Marksman DLC, if you did not own it, you could not fire certain weapons. And that was entirely okay by me. Um, so yeah, this ship will be free for everyone to use. You can place it in the editor, it will be able to defend itself. I'm not sure if... Yeah, it's autonomous defensive weapon systems. I'm not sure if you can actually take over these weapon systems. I don't think so by the sounds of it. But that's still pretty damn cool. It makes it a valuable asset and not just a bit of scenery in the background. And that is basically the role that most... You know, because there's mods that add big ships. Right, and all of those were static as well. Most of those cannot be driven, as far as I know, at least as far as I have seen. So this one also won't be able to be driven. But um, most of these other ships, they're just there for a show. You know, it, it's just yeah, it's just there to make the environment look cool, to make an, an assault look like it actually started somewhere. And this will basically serve the same purpose, except. It will also allow you to land on it and take off from it and probably rearm, <laughs> I suppose. Otherwise, why would you land again? All right. So the surface to air weapon systems. The USS Freedom is outfitted with three autonomous defensive weapon systems. The Praetorian 1C AAA, the MK49 Spartan SAM and the MK21 Centurion SAM. So I guess these two are the SAMs. This guy is the, the Praetorian 1C AAA and I guess this one will be able to take out incoming missiles and things like that. Same for these, probably. I'm not entirely sure with their function. But yeah, you can see some really nice screenshots. Let's have a look. This thing is big as hell. Look at that. So many planes that you can fit on there. You can see the autonomous SAMs over there. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what else is there. Probably this is one of the turrets as well. Not entirely sure. And I wonder how much of the ship is actually actually enterable because i did see you know some animated people but they were all static animations so they're not something you see in regular gameplay so i'm not entirely sure how walkable or how enterable this uh this thing is going to be you can also see let's have a look from the top that looks pretty damn cool you have like areas for each one this is going to be a big challenge to, to pull off because I at least will never be able to do so. I will never be able to land a jet on this thing. And that's also because I have no real interest in the jet DLC myself. Because, you know, I'm an infantry man at heart. That's what I enjoy the most and that's what I will be playing with. At the most, I will add jets to a mission or like a scenario, but never really in a playable role because I just don't understand what makes a scenario of, uh, of airplanes fun. This is also pretty damn cool with the lights lighting up and things like that. That is pretty, pretty damn neat. Alright. I kind of wish now, though, that there was a CSAT version of this one as well. But, uh, oh well. You can't have everything, right? This is free. Can't complain about that. So one final thing to note is the Arma Free Jets DLC is developed in partnership with third-party external development studio Bravo Zero One Studios, which is led by... Make Arma Not War winner Joshua Saul Carpenter. That is pretty damn cool. Because they basically make the content while uh, Bohemia Interactive, I suppose, you know, is working on the features that come along with this DLC. So these guys, they're making uh, all of the content, like, you know, the new airplanes, the, the Arma jets, or um, <laughs> the airplane carrier, I guess. You know, that is my guess here. Because I, I don't think they will leave an external development studio in charge of adding new features to the game. Finally, I want to have a, a look at the DLC bundle. Alright, so yeah, we also had helicopter DLC for DLC bundle 1. So that was the original one for Arma before Apex came out. So this was the DLC that you could get. 
Uh, we have the carts, we have the jet, um, not the jets, we have the helicopter DLC, we have the marksman DLC. The DLC bundle 2 is going to be a little bit bigger with four pieces of content. It is also slightly more expensive. I did already open this up. Um, so in this, we will get, of course, the Armor 3 Jets DLC. It will have a new showcase scenario. We already want that. It will also have some new Steam achievements and more. Um, then in the third part of 2017, we can expect Arma 3 Orange, which is a working title. So when it comes out, it's probably not going to be called Orange. But it is called Orange because um, this DLC is being developed by a new studio of Bohemia Interactive. And it, that one is settled in Amsterdam, actually in the Netherlands where I live myself. So that is pretty damn cool. Um, my guess... Uh, let's see, the Arma 3 Orange DLC will include new vehicles, new clothing and gear, new decorative objects, a mini campaign, showcase and challenge scenarios, and more. In terms of size, the Orange DLC stands somewhere in between the Arma 3 Carts and Arma 3 Helicopters, Marksmen, Jets, and Tanks DLC. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure how much I should expect out of that. Like, I'm not entirely sure how much content is in there. But um, I guess that is all of them combined and not... Uh, <laughs> not individually, you know, it's like the Orange DLC doesn't equal somewhere between cards and one of these pieces, but all of these pieces of content together. Because I can imagine, you know, with new clothing and gear, new vehicles, we will have a tank, we will have a jet, we will have some marksmen, we will have a helicopter, stuff like that. And my guess, of course, is that it's going to be the Dutch army. I think if that happens, it will end up surprising absolutely nobody. But that is really cool, because... For armor, for armor 2, we've had the Dutch army as a mod, and I loved playing around with that, but to see it officially supported in the game, that is really, really nice. And of course, I did know that there were a lot of Dutch people involved with Bohemia Interactive, you know. Prior to Armor 3 coming out, you know, you have uh, Joris Jan van het Land, who was talking about uh, upcoming features and things like that, and I think he was the one that was responsible for the direction of Armor 3. I'm not entirely sure anymore, but um, yeah, definitely a few Dutchies in there, and that is really damn cool, especially now that we have a studio right here in the Netherlands. But then, for Q4 2017, we will get uh, the Tech Ops DLC, and that is a series of tactical operations. It will deliver new single-player scenarios that focus upon challenging, replayable, and authentic military gameplay, making the best use of armor-free sandbox terrain, vehicles, and weapons. I am always up for more single-player scenarios. I haven't played a lot of co-op or multiplayer in Armor 3 for a pretty long time now. If I play Armor 3, I play it in single-player or I work in the editor. So, <laughs> I don't know. There's so many mods for Armor 3, it just makes it really challenging to get into a game, of, or at least a public game. I do have a community of Dutch people that I used to play with, but we also use mods, and I don't know, it's kind of been intimidating to get back into it after I've been gone for a while, because I went traveling for like close to two years, and when I came back I was just like, man, so much has happened, so much has changed, and I just couldn't make the, the mental effort of keeping up with all of that stuff and you're just making myself all up to date. So that's actually also part of why most of my single player missions don't use mod content because I want people to be able to play something in the game without having to download a bunch of stuff. Alright, and finally we have the Armor 3 Tanks DLC. Uh, following our well-established DLC model, it is a lovely DLC model, I think, uh, the Armor 3 Tanks DLC will build on the experience of armored combat in Armor 3 by delivering three new armored vehicles, so probably one for each faction, new playable content, a showcase, and more. The package will be accompanied by a free platform update, which will implement new features and improvements related to tracked and armored vehicles. So basically, it is the tank version of the Jets DLC. This is all really cool. I really like this because Arma, the Arma series and Operation Flashpoint as well has always been uh, primarily an infantry simulator. And the vehicles were there for dressing, but they were never really, you know, they were there for functionality as well, but they were never really all that deep gameplay-wise. You know, they definitely can't hold up with a simulator, like, you know, a, a dedicated tank simulator, a dedicated airplane fighter simulator. It just can't compare. And with these DLCs, 
they're still not going to be close to a proper simulator, of course, but they're going to have a few more features to make them more fleshed out and to make the experience more interesting, while not going quite all the way. And that is fine by me. So if you buy the DLC bundle 2, or the second DLC bundle, <laughs> it will cost you 23 euros. And I think for four pieces of content, that is a lot of value, actually. We will have uh, mostly vehicles, but also, you know, free free uh, features. And, you know, even though I'm not interested in the Jets DLC, and probably not even in the Tanks DLC, I will still end up purchasing this, because I want to support Bohemia Interactive. I would like them to see... I would like to see them move on to a new engine at some point, don't get me wrong. But I definitely like that they use the selling of this DLC, not just to, you know, they're not milking us, they're giving us free stuff along the way as well. For everyone, even if you, you know, if you bought the Armor Free Alpha when it first came out for 20 euros, all of, the, all of these features would have come to you for free. You just can't use the new planes and the helicopters and the guns and, and whatnot, but you can play multiplayer, you're not separated from your friends. That is a really powerful thing, because there are so many games that get that part wrong. But um, yeah, let me know what you think about the Armor Free, uh, yeah, you know, the Armor Free DLC model. I think it's great. Maybe you disagree. So yeah, let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you guys for whatever video I do next.